Good lord, James McAvoy, kill it as always. Oh, well, that is very sweet of you to say. But that husband character, what a mess. Welcome guys, welcome to the Buddies in Blockbuster. I'm your host, AJ, and oh boy, we were definitely expecting this movie. I'm a James McAvoy fan from the time he did Professor X in X-Men all the way to Split, a huge fan. Speak No Evil is directed by James Watkins, and as of when I saw the trailer, and my wife is also looking forward to it more than me, to be honest, it definitely sparked like a huge interest for both of us. And truth be told, the show stealer in this whole movie is James McAvoy. His presence alone, as of when he's on screen, which is probably 90% of the time, you're hooked for the most part, right? Yes, he brings his all, he goes above and beyond for this character, and it was really good to see that. But the most part, the story is about a family who who's on vacation, have their own issues and stuff like that going through, but they're on vacation. They stumble upon this other family, which is James McAvoy's family, with a wife and a kid, who is the complete opposite with the way how they live their lifestyles. You know, James McAvoy is an extra word, always about fun and games, venturous, goes above and beyond, whereas the other folks are more of the silent. They just want to get by their day and just have a good time. These folks meet, get along, everything goes well. Right after the vacation, they get this note card. I'm not spoiling much, but they get this note card from James. James McAvoy said, hey, why don't you come visit us? Uh, I have a huge farm out in nowhere's land. Let, let's hang out. For some reason, they wing it and they go to the farm and all hell breaks loose with the whole weirdness, chaotic components that's revolving this family, this, this house. It turns into a survival kind of story from there. When you hear that story, you're always kind of hooked, mainly because you have James McAvoy. And if you've seen the watch the trailer, you could see that his personality and the fluctuations that he has. Oh, that's spot. On. Whether it's him being this joyful and great husband all the way to giving the stares and this weird looks bursting out in his temper tantrums and anger. Oh, the fact that this guy can do all of that in one single shot is the best. So for sure, he's he's the main reason of why I was hooked into the movie and he delivers in the best way possible. Now, I've got to talk about this one thing. The husband character, Ben, he's played by Scoot McNary. Good Lord, I, I don't think he's allowed to be deemed as a husband. He doesn't qualify as a husband. He's definitely not a man either. Nothing against the actor, but I think the character is that way where you feel like guy is a total waste piece of, you know what, not bothered about his daughter, has this, you know, no care attitude with the wife sometimes. And in one scene at the end, he's just a pussy. That's where I like the wife. It was Louise. She's played by, you know, Mackenzie Davis. I really like the fact that she saw the, the sense. She was more of, hey, I'm going to step it up. And, and when shit's going down, you got to pull yourself together. And she was a driving force for the most part. From a reality or a physical standpoint, I do realize the husband has balls. But I truly believe that the wife had bigger balls than this guy. <laughs> Because there were so many incidents where I'm like, I would never do that. I would either get away from that situation or stand up for your family and your wife or give it back right? It never happens. And you're going to see that frustration as you as you watch the movie. The one thing that I learned from this movie is your parents would have told you, your grandparents would have told you, you know, any elderly person would have told you the same lesson that you've heard when you're a kid. Do not speak to strangers. And, and that's emphasized here. Maybe that was not the main message of the movie, but that's kind of emphasized here. To me, if you smell something is wrong, especially when it comes to a stranger, you see signs that are red flags that, hey, things are not okay, bounce. Just get the hell out of there. <laughs> Don't invite trouble to you is, is my only advice, right? In this movie and in this storyline, family basically gives into a lot more than what we would do. I don't think when it comes to a real circumstance, this would happen because there was multiple instances where they could have just escaped and gone away and basically taken themselves out of that situation. Be safe. But I, I get it. You got to run the movie. got to see what happens and stuff like that. There's a lot of conveniences. Just ride with it. 
and, and you should be fine. Now, I strongly believe it's it's a good time, mainly if you're like a James McAvoy fan, because he's the epitome of this whole movie. There was there were a couple of plots and scenes where it was really good. You, you're hooked. You're like, okay, what's going to happen next? It's kind of a slow burn as, as and when we move forward. It's nothing outstanding and something that, that breaks your mind. I think it's a good time and a good lesson for folks who shouldn't delve into strangers a lot. Uh, just be careful out there. And if there's nothing else going on, yeah, you guys can check it out. But I see the Beetlejuice is there. It's a one-time one if you're a James McAvoy fan, it would be better if you could just wait for it to come on Netflix or any kind of streaming platforms. It's not like you're going to miss out on something if you don't go to the theater. So be sure to check out other movie reviews that I posted. And as always, guys, be sure to like, subscribe, and share.